Um, there's, there's sort of two parts to this that I want to look at. And um, one of them is how to model confidence. Um, and the other part of it is something I call the YouTube analogy. So like when, um, when Darren was doing the work before, it kind of brings us into a memory or remembering a particular place or a person that what we watch up here makes an impact on us and makes an impact on our mindset and the way we feel. And there is a lot of fear in this question of being in a vulnerable position if I would be wrong. It's like, obviously, I'd, again, would love to, deal, to dig more into what specifically that is. But ultimately, we're, go, we're talking about going into the worst case scenario. No one gets anxious about going for the job interview. The people there are absolutely loving them, finding them amazing and giving them 30 grand a year more than what they were asking for. You know, we don't, we don't think about going out and asking that person out and then ended up on a date and then ended up finding your soulmate and living in happily ever after. We worry about the things that could go wrong. And just like if we were to watch a horror film or like a, a scary movie, we feel scared. If we watch an anxious movie up here and we feel, we actually feel, we invite the anxiety. That's, that's when anxiety is of a perceived future event. That's when it, we can feel it. That future event can't hurt us right now, but we can think it and we can see it and we can feel it. So we do that. Now, if the, if the worst film in the world was on when we came home and there was a big giant screen there and the worst film in the world was on and we walked in, we wouldn't sit down and go, oh, I hate this. I can't wait to watch the whole thing with popcorn. But when, we've, when, it's, when it's our own anxiety or things that we're fearful of, we sit there and we watch every single minute. And this thing's kind of like the YouTube algorithm, right? It goes, oh, Dave likes watching videos of himself cocking up on stage. I'm going to give him more of those things. And it just keeps on firing them up. And each one, every time I watch it, I get the emotion of it. And again, the, the, the Kung Fu Panda thing, right? I'm meeting my destiny on the path and choosing to avoid it. I'm seeing the thing in my, in my head. And now anxiety or fear of a future situation. Um, and even negativity bias, well, specifically negativity bias that Darren mentioned earlier, it wants us to prepare, but it causes us to panic, especially in light of an unobvious threat. When it's a saber-toothed tiger, it was passed down through the generations because of the, the version of our ancestors that said, there's a saber-toothed tiger there, let's sharpen the spears and let's, you know, defend ourselves and let's lock the kids inside those people procreated and carried on their genes. Whereas the ones that went, ooh, cute kitty, went up and stroked it, got mauled and didn't pass on their genes. So it makes sense for us to actually stay away from fearful situations because they could potentially harm us. Problem is, when we have a perceived situation, what it does is it gives us a goal that we're then trying to run away from. This person obviously wants confidence, wants increased confidence and wants to kind of get out there more. So actually they want to be able to have a goal that they're running towards. Now, with this thing up here, what we do, treat it like YouTube. If you went onto your phone and YouTube was playing a video that you didn't want to watch, you change it. Now, I have this rule that says positivity takes practice, but negativity comes natural. So your brain will come up with the negative things over and over again. It's like pop-up ads, pop-up ads, but we have to choose to put the positive thing on. Just like we chose to sit down and do Darren's thing a minute ago, and I'm so glad I did um, because that like mellowed me out. I'm, I'm honestly 10% more mellow than I was before. It might not seem it, but... <laughs> but um, and it was great. We chose to do that. You have to choose to engage with the positive stuff. The negative stuff will just be like, here you go, Dave. Here's more of those videos that you seem to love. Now, over time, we can teach the algorithm just like we can online. If we don't interact with things that we don't like, then we, it, it learns. Oh, actually, it wants to keep us showing the things we do. But what you'll do is you sit there and you're going to visualize. And we're going to do that in a sec for the confidence thing. You want to sit there and visualize what's the best case scenario. And that will feel like it's work. Whereas the negative one will feel like it's natural. And then we suddenly believe that, oh, well, that's me, the natural side. And the side that I'm having to work for, well, that's not natural and I'm having to work for that. So that must be wrong. No, it's just a skill that we've never really learned. We've obsessively thought the worst case scenario since childhood. We've always, because of this negativity bias, we've not sat there and, you know, we may have daydreamed a few times about things going well, but really we don't sit there and obsess over it. So we need to learn it. It's a completely different skill. So you sit down and we're going to construct this in a sec. You sit down and you say, what is the best way this could happen? How, imagine how I'm going to stand in that job interview or how I'm going to ask that person out when I go and ask them on a date. Because if you go up and ask that person on a date and go, um, Joanne, um, I was kind of thinking maybe if you, if you sort of into it, that maybe you could go to Pizza Express with me. 
chances are, you know, no matter how much Joanne's into you, she's going to turn around and be like, mm, no, it's not going to be into that level of game, right? So when we go in cautious, we almost get the thing. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whereas when we practice that in our head and that's all that happens, we are actually practicing it. We're rehearsing it. So when we get into that situation, that's what we've learned. Again, we can't practice a lot of these things face to face with people in the room, but we can practice them up here. And whilst we're going through the anxious version of it, we're practicing the thing that is only going to make us feel more and more nervous. And when we feel nervous, well, I mean, Darren would speak to this probably a lot better than I would, but again, like to use Darren's word, it sends us into the attic, right? It sends us into that overthinking or it sends us into that freezing into the basement. So when we, and then as a result, when we are in the attic or in the basement, we're not going to articulate ourselves well. If I thought about this question and thought about what if it all goes wrong and all the rest of it, and my weird Northern accent, no one can understand it. And they're all like, huh, what do you mean? Um, I'd panic and I'd make more mistakes and I'd talk faster and my weird Northern accent would get harder to understand. And as a result, I might then re like look at your blank faces on the screen and go, they're not getting this and then panic and then back off. And the whole thing becomes this negative re reinforcement cycle. So what we do and um, is we basically go to the positive version of it. Now, the positive version of it is step one. And then step two is, is actually asking the question, what if it does go wrong, what am I going to do? That's the question your brain wants answering, but it's asking it in a way kind of, it's asking it in a bad way. Like imagine you've got two friends, one of them phones you up and says, oh, I love spending time with you. I know we haven't seen each other for ages. We've both been busy, but I can't wait till we can see each other again. When can we hang out? And another friend phones up and says, oh, you're always busy. You've never got time for me. When can we hang out? which one of them are you going to go and hang out with? You're going to hang out with friend number one, right? Because they've both said they want to hang out with you. In principle, this is good. They both want to hang out with you. But one of them said it in a way that makes your defenses go up. And we do this, and the other one said it in a way that makes you feel accepted. Now, that's the same thing here. When your brain goes, oh, how are you going to handle that then? If that, hand, if that comes up, you're going to completely and utterly brick it. I bet you will. Let's see how you handle it. We go defensive. Whereas if it goes, you know what, actually, let's get you in a good positive state first and then let's deal with this question. How are we going to handle that? Because if that's a real situation, how are we going to handle it? And we want to start asking the question like that, the second way, the one that leads us towards solutions. And the way to do that is to get into a positive state first. So I want you all to play along with this one. And now that Darren has opened the door to the fact that we can do the techniques live on video, um, Right, it's a little bit of neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, but what I want you to do is I want you to go to a time that you were confident. Now, it doesn't have to be something you want to be confident in. So if you're talking like about asking someone out or you're talking about a business and you've only been confident in the opposite, that doesn't matter. Just go to a memory where you're confident. And if you don't have one, imagine what it would be like to be confident. Imagine like, you know, the superhero Wonder Woman version of yourself with the hands on the hips and what you would feel like. And then close your eyes for a second and see that. See that through your own eyes and see the world around you as you are in that situation. What is the, how are people responding to you and your confidence? What can you hear? Like not just the sounds in the room, but maybe what's the voice in your own head saying now that you are 100% confident? How are you standing? How are you breathing? What is the feeling and where is it in your body? Now, Wherever that feeling is in your body, like it might be in your chest, it might be a strong feeling in your chest, it might feel a, a, a steady feeling in your stomach, it might feel, be a powerful feeling in your mind, wherever it is for you, I want you to imagine that feeling now radiating out to the rest of your body and filling you up. So you've got that confidence, not just in one localized area, but your entire being is confident. And now as you look at the world around you, I want you to turn the brightness up slightly, like you might on an Instagram photo, and just feel that warmth. Alice has definitely already got it. So, <laughs> so to feel that warmth and feel that what it changes. The sounds, turn the volume up on the sounds, and then find the sweet spot, because there'll be a point at which it gets too loud. So when you get to that point where it's too loud, just knock it back a little bit, and then that sound, when it's all around you, those voices that, whether that is other people's approval, whether that's your own approval, imagine it nice and loud, surround sound filling the entire room. And that is feeling confident. And that was a super small version of it, but you can elaborate and extrapolate that a hundred times. You can do that with any emotion. Here's the thing. Negativity comes natural. So when a bad memory comes up, you, sorry, when a memory comes up, usually it's a bad one, right? 
<laughs> it's like we don't sit there again and get depressed over happy things that happened in our past we, we sit there and it's very rare that we rem like we sit there and spend a lot of time reminiscing the good relationships we usually reminisce the breakups and the hard bits and all that stuff um and again that is the youtube algorithm up here putting on stuff that plays out and changes your emotion you can use that to your positive you can use anything that you that life throws at you that you can use as a negative you can reframe and use that exact same thing as a positive so get yourself in that emotional state, feel that confidence first. And you know what, specifically, if you want to do it with that future event, imagine how you would be in that situation. How are you going to like, you know, if, you're, if it's a job interview, imagine how you're going to stand. And if it's like, the question is, well, what happens if they ask me, you know, a silly question about myself and it completely throws off my game. In our heads, we practice getting thrown off our game. So actually go, well, what happens if they do ask that question? What are you going to say? What are you going to like? At the beginning of this call, when like, you know, I thought I made a couple, I've made a few little notes on my page here. They don't, they will not make sense to me tomorrow, but they make sense to me today. And this was all just like, if I get to that question and I've been sat here listening to like Darren or Rowena or, or, or Ray or yourself, and I've like just totally been absorbed with what they've said and I forget what I'm going to say. I wrote those things. So I'm like, come back to that later. And that, that was preparation. And I, as a result, my brain got freed up of the possibility of anxiety of forgetting what I was going to say because I'd already committed it to there.